And just by asking about how the CBO uh, models this, uh, every time a piece of health care legislation comes up, is the CBO building a new model or is it building upon one that's been in place here for a while? No, it's building on one that's been in place and has evolved over time, has been improved over time. Uh, when I was uh, in charge of the CBO, we did our first modeling, uh, and that was for the Clinton health care reform. And subsequently, uh, that model has been uh, added to, improved, uh, and uh, nevertheless, it's an extraordinarily complex uh, task to model major health care reform. Bearing that complexity in mind, we see politicians grabbing onto certain numbers from the report from the score that was released uh, yesterday. Is it a mistake to look at those numbers in specific? Is it better to look sort of broadly, more thematically, at what the CBO concluded yesterday? Well, health reform has lots of components, lots of elements, lots of metrics. Uh, you know, there is how many people are insured. There's how generous is that insurance. Uh, there is how many plans will come forward uh, for people to choose among. Uh, what is the reaction that states will have to the new proposal? How will Medicaid uh, and Medicare change? Uh, so there's no one thing one can uh, look at, uh, nor is there a single comprehensive uh, measure of the overall package. And that's what makes it so controversial and so difficult for the American public to understand, as well as for its uh, elected representatives. The, the CBO considers this to be major uh, legislation. I'll have you help me with the, the terminology there, what that means uh, exactly. But as a, by virtue of that, uh, it was unable to incorporate or quantify macroeconomic effects into the analysis we got uh, yesterday. Uh, you know, under, how big of an under, X factor is that? Well, under the rules that uh, Congress adopted uh, in the last year, uh, major pieces of legislation have to uh, be accompanied by dynamic scoring as well as static scoring, which means what will the impact be on the economy and how will that affect revenues and expenditures uh, in the federal budget. Uh, the uh, budget office didn't have the time uh, or probably some of the uh, uh, analytical data uh, to do that, but should it do it, it would probably increase the uh, reduction in the deficit that the uh, uh, estimate that they produced yesterday uh, had. It said that uh, deficits over the next 10 years would go down $337 billion, which uh, of course is good news, but there's a uh, other side to that good news, and that other side is uh, that what was good for the federal budget will be bad for state budgets because an awful lot of that uh, reduction is associated with an $880 billion reduction in Medicaid expenditures to the states. And the states are going to have to come up with that, or low-income people are going to have to accept an even bigger uh, sacrifice than CBO suggested yesterday. We've seen headlines over the last many months about insurance companies pulling out of some markets. Uh, some have said the, the insurance market is uh, not stable. Uh, draw that out for us. How, how does an unstable insurance market affect the economy more broadly? Well, uh, it mostly affects the people who are trying to obtain in insurance through the marketplaces under the Affordable Care Act or whatever mechanism uh, is available under the new uh, proposed legislation. Uh, one good piece of news uh, in this uh, otherwise rather gloomy CBO mm -hmm. Uh, projection was that uh, they said that the new markets, if this legislation were to be enacted, uh, would be stable. There wouldn't be lots of turnover of insurance companies. There'd be uh, a sufficient uh, amount of competition for the system to work. On the other hand, CBO also said that it felt that going forward, should we keep the a Affordable Care Act, that that marketplace would be stable too, that we've had a big adjustment uh, in uh, premiums over the last uh, uh, year, uh, and that was enough to stabilize the market. So it's really, uh, in other words, a tie score on that dimension. But for Americans, it's a good uh, conclusion, uh, and hopefully it will be realized. Uh, Alice Rivlin told me yesterday, the founding director of the CBO, she said that the kind of political pressure that the CBO is dealing with right now is nothing new, it's nothing novel. 
uh, that somebody in her position or the position that you were in develops a pretty thick skin and is able to, to filter all of that out. Would you agree with her when you see what's being said about the CBO right now from the administration, from some politicians on Capitol Hill? Uh, is there anything new about that? Uh, absolutely, that's uh, old news. I can turn around and show, this, show you the scar tissue on my back. Uh, when uh, I, uh, the CBO in, in my uh, era, uh, evaluated the uh, Clinton health care proposal, there was every bit as much uh, gnashing of teeth and uh, sort of nasty things said about the CBO uh, as there is now. Uh, the one thing to remember is while advocates of pieces of important legislation get very upset in the short run over a CBO uh, projection or estimate that doesn't uh, fit their political needs, uh, you know, a few months later, uh, they're out saying, you know, CBO is really good for the Congress, good for the American people. Uh, it uh, keeps our uh, feet to the fire, so to speak, or keeps us from uh, being totally uh, uh, disassociated with uh, fiscal realism. All right, Robert.